Hi everybody, it's Zeev Simon, the creator of Surgical Master, the surgical training for dentists. Welcome to another quick lecture and I wanted to talk to you about the difference between aesthetic and functional crown lengthening, which is a common question. We're dealing with two resective procedures that involve removal of soft tissue, a gingivectomy, or removal of supporting bone uh, that we call ostectomy. So what really is the difference? So when we talk about aesthetic crown lengthening, we are trying to improve teeth proportions. We are at the same time also reducing the gingival display if this is a problem. So the gummy smile is definitely improved. When we talk about functional crown lengthening, it's most of the time to complement our restorative work in more challenging situations where a tooth had subgingival caries or fractures, and we don't have enough tooth structure to restore the tooth predictably. So both procedures involve removal of soft and hard tissue, but the reasons are different, and starting with really the goal uh, that is uh, significantly different. So when we talk about functional crown lengthening, the goal is to improve the retention of the restoration by having more tooth structure available we're also getting a better ferrule effect. So our preparation, our finish line, is not made on the buildup material. It's made on two structure, about one to two millimeters apical to the buildup. So that's, that will improve the ferrule. It will prevent uh, those negative forces at the base of the restoration and uh, eventually failure of the restoration. So we can definitely improve this with a functional procedure. In aesthetic crown lengthening, we are improving the teeth proportions. We are displacing the gingival level more apically, and we're getting a better width to length ratio, width to height ratio, and at the same time, we're reducing the gingival display. Now, it, another difference is that the functional crown lengthening is performed all around the tooth, 360 degrees, and that involves reflecting a buccal flap and a lingual or palatal flap, and with aesthetic crown lengthening, we are only working on the buccal aspect of the teeth. So we are involving only a buccal flap. That's the main difference between the two procedures. And really the next difference is, uh, is a function of uh, you know, how much do we reflect. Because in functional crown lengthening, we do not preserve the papilla. Quite the opposite. Most of the time, those cracks and and fractures and secondary caries occur interproximally, and that's the area wh where we will resect bone and, and soft tissue. So there's absolutely no papilla preservation. With aesthetic crown lengthening, the papilla preservation is critical. We can't lose the interproximal tissue because we'll have an aesthetic compromise. So just remember that's another difference between the two procedures. Now, a function of everything else is, again, getting recession on adjacent teeth. That's, unfortunately, a side effect of functional crown lengthening. If you do this properly, you will notice that the adjacent teeth, one on each side, will develop some minimal recession, and that is not a positive thing, and patients may get upset. So we need to focus on discussing this with the patients and letting them know that this is one of those side effects that this procedure has. With aesthetic crown lengthening, the tissue resection is selective. We are aiming for an exact gingival margin on particular teeth in specific locations, and we're not expecting recession on other areas. That's, that's very important to know. In regards to placing a provisional, it's absolutely critical to place a provisional prior to the crown lengthening procedure with functional, because we need to have some type of idea where the finish line would be, where the challenges are, so we can address them during the procedure and, and know how much bone to resect. With aesthetic crown lengthening, ideally have all the provisionals, if we're, we're talking about veneers, have them done after the surgery and when the tissue is healed. This way you minimize the amount of time the patient is uh, wearing a provisional and uh, will prevent those uh, weekly visits where those provisionals vene provisional veneers uh, come off. Another difference is that the functional crown lengthening is not done in the aesthetic zone because the procedure itself, again, involves recession on adjacent teeth, involves uh, obviously creating an asymmetrical uh, gum margin because we are crown lengthening uh, one or two teeth and not the uh, 
adjacent teeth. With aesthetic chronic thinning, uh, it's done only in the aesthetic zone, it, depending on the uh, smile pattern. So if a patient breaks uh, tooth number eight at the gingival margin, we will not perform a functional chronic thinning because that will create a very significant asymmetry between the two central incisors. So remember, functional chronic thinning is recommended in the non-aesthetic zone, the non-visible zone, and the opposite for the aesthetic chronic thinning. Now the common indications, the common indications where we would recommend functional chronic thinning are patients that have experienced a tooth breaking subgingively or having a subgingival caries. And aesthetic chronic thinning, the common indication uh, are patients with delayed eruption patterns where there's still tooth, tooth structure that is hiding under the gum tissue needs to be exposed or patients that have some sort of attrition and compensatory eruption. So indeed it is a resective procedure, they're both crown lengthening procedures, but they're very different in their goals, their side effects, and the common indications. So this is it for the difference between aesthetic and functional crown lengthening. I hope this information was very valuable to you when you consider performing these two procedures, knowing the uh, benefits and the limitations of both. And if you're interested in more information about crown lengthening and other exciting procedures, visit me at surgicalmaster.com and I look forward to giving, giving you more information and helping you with your surgeries.